back to the show. I'm Kachi Ovi, and of course, you are still watching Arise 360. So let's meet my guest today, Ruby Yang. She has a very strong belief, and it is that a well-written song can really embody all the emotions of a human experience, and she articulates this beautifully with her powerful voice and her truthful lyrics. Now, after years of singing in choirs, performing with dance crews, and leading worship in church, Ruby Yang's move from Lagos to Jos, Nigeria in 2010 was the catalyst for her growth, both as a recording artist and as a performing artist. Now, of course, she has won a collection of notable music awards as well, from Best Vocal Performance to Best Collaboration and Best Collaboration at the Niger Music Awards to the Best West African Female Artist at the Afrima Awards, amongst many others. Of course, we all remember her leaving Chocolate City slash Warner Music Group in 2019. And since then, Ruby has been building her own company and label, RG Entertainment and Media, under which she plans to release her next extended playlist. Of course, she is also passionate and she supports and mentors females, young artists who do not really have easy access to the entertainment industry in Nigeria and West Africa. And we've got Ruby Gyan Kalani. That means look at me, right? Yeah, My house is not so bad. I try. No, you tried, actually. <laughs> people who say Kalani. No, Kalani. That's it. Yeah, Kaleni. I really like, you know, the house I introduced you to. I find yes. it, while some people would think, oh, why does she talk like that? Mm -hmm. I actually really admire it when I hear people have that little bit of the intonation. Yeah, that little, right? Yeah. Especially if they can speak English very well, then it's more, it's like, sophisticated. Ah, I know, it's actually very. Anyway, thanks for joining us on Arise 360. So let's talk about, here. first of all, your music, you know, it's been a minute and everyone has been just waiting for that new Ruby Gang fire. Do you sometimes just feel like overwhelmed with the Leave pressure? Me <laughs> now when I go online to just post up, hey, my rubies, what's up? Because that's why I call my fans. They're just like, yeah. auntie, song. <laughs> we don't care about what you're going through. Aww. Give us music. You know, yeah. that's it. Like, one said, if you give us an EP, I'll forgive you. So I said, no problem. I'm worried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is bold. Yeah, they are, they are very, you know, fans are very demanding. I know, you know, I know. But rights. I think it just reminds me of Adele, who just put out a song exactly. six years after. Yeah. And through that period, Adele went through a divorce. Wow. Adele lost a lot a of weight, yes. you know, so you could tell that that was a really defining period for yeah. her. So what does that tell you about, you know, just that demanding spirit from fans? As an artist, how does it affect you when your fans just demand too much of you? It's, it's, he has his good size and his bad size. His good size, it can motivate you to go back in the studio, do more because you know people are excited. And it's also for me who hasn't put out music in a while, it's humbling and touching because they care. Even though I've not shown up in it for yeah. maybe two years, they still are tuned in. So that's such a blessing. The flip side of that is, is that it's like, you know, I'm a human being as well. I don't only sing. Yeah. I have a life, and sometimes I want to deal with that. I want to take care of things. I'm going through my personal issues just like you do, you know. So a little, you know, compassion would be nice or yeah. sensitivity. Yeah. I, 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 I would like that. But do you think leaving Chocolate City in any way contributed to that? Um, actually, no. I Prior to leaving Chocolate City, I was doing this event. Um, it's called All Life, so a concert I curated. And I set it up because artists like me that do the kind of music I do, mm -hmm. it's not often we get called to nice, really dope shows. You know, mm -hmm. it's once in a while. So I said, I want to create that platform for those artists. And I also want to make sure that our fans have that opportunity to come and watch us. So I did that back to back for a year and a half, 2018 to 2019. I was burned out. Okay. <laughs> but prior to then, I'd be wanting to go solo for a while. You know, set up my own company, inspired by Beyonce, Madonna, yeah. who set up their own things and saying, you know what, I want to take charge of my career. So transitioning from artist to business has been a process. I've had to reorient my mind, learn about that. business. It takes a while. And I said, you know what, for the first time, I'm on my own timetable. Uh, I get that. Yes, do you understand? I'm my own boss. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take my time and do it right mm -hmm. and just trust that the fans you know, who have been there for me will give me a little bit more time to get it together and come back as an artist as well. I like that. So basically, now you're going behind the wheels. You're yes. like, okay, you know what? Yes. Let me see how I can help other people. Exactly. Now, Ruby, you are from the northern part of Nigeria. Yeah. And there are a couple of northern artists that I love. I love Classic. I love Morel. Yeah. Uh, there's, I think those are the only two. Are there others? Egypt. Ah, yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, you wouldn't, when you, you, think, not, you don't you, think you of, don't her, think like of her as yes. a northern artist. Yes. You just think of her, okay, DJ is just an artist. But yeah. when you think classic, you think more of, these are people, um, Banson Rainey is a song. Uh, Banson Rainey. Yeah, classic for oh, that. You ah, tried. I love that you song. Tried. It's beautiful. <laughs> but you see, the thing is, 
How do you feel about the reception that they're getting? I mean, we see Eastern artists like mm -hmm. Flavor Fino, they do songs in their language. Yes. They still, you know, get all over the place. Yeah. But with Northerners, it's not that easy. That's saying publicity. Mm -hmm. They give in, they promote, yeah, but yeah. the reception is not the same. Well, I mean, the North is still, or when I say the North, you know, the North is there's the far North, the Hausa North, then there's the Middle Belt, which co covers Plateau, Benue, Nasara, Kogi, there's many. Yeah. You know? So, like, I'm, I'm Middle Belt mm -hmm. or North Central. Mm -hmm. So, we're still very kind of cultural, strongly religious. So, um, it doesn't create a stimulating environment for entertainment because, you know, entertainment will go. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, we can go overboard. <laughs> so, they're just like, no, no. But it's changing, it's growing, and with the internet, you know, social media, all of that stuff, the penetration is better. So now we're seeing, we're seeing more, but it's going to take a while, honestly. It's going to take a while. I like that. I, I think I would love to see it because I think there's so much beauty in the yeah, culture to absolutely. see. Absolutely. I mean, so in terms of policies, though, yes. I know with regards to Canningwood, it's such a huge industry. I have a strong feeling that Canningwood is bigger than... No, like when you want it, because you know they try to separate themselves from Nollywood as yeah, you say it. Yeah. But I have a feeling that it might, it's, be it, it might be bigger because they're quiet, but they're they're their fan base. It's, it's, it's crazed. It's intense. <laughs> my like is, I know because my northern fan base they go hard. <laughs> yeah. So what it is, I think, is that you know there are eight Hausa speaking countries in West Africa. Mm -hmm. So that you, I think, I agree with you. Where it's possible that actually it might be bigger than we are, than we think it is, but. Um, like I said, you know, it's still, there's the culture, there's religion, and it has its pluses. You know, there's the beauty of that, but then it has its limitations in terms of ex creative expression. Yeah. Because we're creatives, you know, we just want to express, express ourselves. Ah. It might rob some people the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yes. he has robbed a lot of people the wrong way. Yeah. Mohamed Sadao has gotten the thick end of that stick. But anyway, Ruby, <laughs> we're going to take a quick break on the show. But yeah. when we get back, I know you're up to so many other things from yep. women empowerment, mm -hmm. you know, just de dealing with the female gender and seeing yeah. how much you can impact in the lives of, Absolutely. you know, especially from the northern parts of Nigeria. Yeah. So we'll take a quick break on Arise 360 when we get back to the show. We still have Ruby Gang chatting about so much more. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're welcome back to the show. You are still watching Arise 360 and my name is Kachi Ofia and I've still got Ruby Giang with me on the show. So we've spoken about your music. Yep, yep. Let's talk about other things you're up to. You know, there was a phrase you used earlier today because this is something that you're passionate about. Contraceptives, yeah. uh, you know, family planning, yeah. especially for women in the North. Yep. And then you said something, demystifying contraceptives. Mm -hmm. So there is some type of mystery to yeah. it. I mean, so I had a IG live session with a lady who has worked with the Society for Family Health for donkey years. She's mm -hmm. a family planning health guru, especially in the northern parts of the country. And she gave us some examples. So some, ex some would say if a woman put in an IUD, mm -hmm. when the baby comes out, it will come out holding. <laughs> <laughs> See how funny that is? But I heard that before as a young girl. That's one. Yeah. Another one is that if, you, if you're using an IUD and every time, every month you're committing abortion because yeah. if, you're, if you're making love with your husband or your partner, mm -hmm. you're not allowing, so you're committing abortion. Every time. Yeah, yeah. So it's killing the baby. Yes. About, like, and that, she said... These are all like myths that people actually believe. Till date. Till okay. date, then of course there's one of you who gain weight. And her oh, I heard that one. I've heard that yes. one. Yes. Now her point is some people, some of these... Um, contraceptives, they increase your appetite. Mm -hmm. So some women will just start chowing. <laughs> of course, you yeah. gain weight. She told me so many. And honestly, there, there's, there was another one that was, uh, that gives you breast cancer. It gives you, you know, so these are all or some of those things. So for me too, it was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. There's that as well. Then um, there's also people reluctant because um, they, women are dealing, a lot of women are dealing with PCOS, you know, just all yeah. this stuff. So they're yeah. just like, if I take it, it messes me up, you know, that kind of stuff. So that was, for me, it was just really about shining light on these so-called taboo topics. Because whether you like it or not, people are going to have kids, people are going to, you know, um, do that. So we need to, my passion is to inform, educate people and say, listen, no, these things that we're hiding and trying to shove under the table or talk about in the dark, let's bring it out to the light because we're not helping anybody. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? We actually need to talk more about this. So, um that is that is kind of what I'm That's on. That's interesting. Um, particularly in the north, because we're very cultural and still religious. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is not spoken about openly. Mm -hmm. And you know, when things are shrouded in mystery, there's chance for misinformation. Yeah. Ignorance thrives. So I'm just trying to do my little bit in saying, listen, let's bring this out in the open mm -hmm. and let's talk about it and let's give people the tools and the information they need 
you know, to just help them live better lives. You know, it's interesting that you'd mention this in culture because I remember an incident in New York in 2019. Yeah. You know, I was at a seminar. Bill Gates was there. Yeah. Ali Kodangote was there. And then I don't know what brought up the conversation of children, yeah. but the moderator asked the question about, you know, um, okay, it had to do with poverty, you know, okay. in various countries around yeah. the world. You know, population, population control and all of that. And then some, the moderator asked the question about, you know, okay, Bill Gates, you know, how many children you, um, do you think is ideal or something like mm -hmm. that? And he just, you know, very moderate. He, he, his, his answer was basically he's all for the conservative lifestyle. Mm -hmm. he, will, he doesn't need to have so many. Yes. You know, two, three, he's good. He mm -hmm. doesn't need to have so many, even if he has all the money. Yeah. And through that entire process, Alec Odangate was sitting right there and he was just quiet. And then when it got to his turn, he had a pause and then he just goes, well, my culture permits me to have as many kids as I want to. So, and if I have the money, why not? <laughs> Before the laughter burst out, yeah. there was this death silence like, like what? <laughs> Did that really just happen on this stage? Yes. So it just goes to show that it's not a class thing. It's no, a cultural culture, thing. Yeah, so how do struggle. you... Because you would have said, oh, maybe maybe they just don't know better. They, do not, they don't yeah, have exposure. Yeah. They don't know. Yeah. But that's not it. Because even the ones with the most exposure, it's a cultural thing. So how do you now start to reorient people's minds against something as deep as culture? I think one thing that, you know, is important is if you have a conversation, let them know that for every time a woman has a child, especially if she spaces it out and especially if she has more than a certain number, her life expectancy is greatly lowered. Really? Yes, it is. If you're having... Um, the WHO advises two to three years because your body, every time a woman gives birth, she has, she ha there's a chance she could die. Mm -hmm. First of all, that's, we know this. Mm -hmm. So already, if you're putting her, every time she goes through it, every organ in her body is drained. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't get to rest and heal, do you understand? And she goes next year and has another one, that healing... Already, she's in a lower heart. Just think of energy. Mm -hmm. is reduced. Then she has another one. is reduced. Then she has another one. So it just doesn't make sense. Then how do you want to take care of the children? How do you yeah. want to take care of yourself? Yeah. So if, we, if, if we're able to, and that's what we want to do, you know, because in the North, the influencers are men. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to tell them, listen, every time your wife has a child, like you're really reducing her expectancy. And if she's dead, who's going to take care of your kids? Exactly. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. those are those things. But it's really just a lot of, like I said, there's myths and misconceptions and yeah, just a lot is. of information that a lot of people don't have and don't understand. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what we're trying to do. Interesting. Now, Ruby, this week is a very significant one for a lot of Nigerians okay. because mm. this week, a year ago, it was, I, I, I mean, my Snapchat keeps reminding me of, you know, moments mm. at the, you know, protests at the yeah, Lekki yeah, Toge, yeah. pictures I took and all of that. Mm. Of, co of, of course, before, you know, what happened on the 20th yeah. took place. Yeah. And there's so many conversations that are being had, but I want us to take this from a, an empowerment perspective. Mm -hmm. One of the major goals of the NTARS movement was to end police brutality. Yeah. And insecurity is a big issue, but it affects women in ways that we cannot Worse. even imagine. Yeah. So Worse. you're also trying to shed light on that as well. Mm -hmm. So tell us some more about that. I mean, if there's anyone that always suffers when there's some kind of instability or, or um, issue like that, it's women and children. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's really, for me, it's now, I'm not a fan of like bashing people, male or female, mm -hmm. but I think it's very important for us to take it to these guys and say, listen, these things you do have an effect on people who are basically almost helpless. Do you understand? Because it's the system that we live in is very male dominated and it's basically a patriarchy, right? But you, just before you continue yeah. here, do you think it is as a result of, is it, is, it, is it because of choice? Like, do you think women just choose to not say anything? Or maybe they just do not have the platforms? Because if you think 2021 and yes. how lots of women are rising up to do great things, yeah. can we still say that it is male-dominated? Can we still accept that? 100%. Hmm. It still very much is. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of, when you think of, one, one key thing that has to do with power is economic, economic empowerment. Yeah. We know that there's still a huge disparity, disparity. between, do you understand? So as long as that happens, you know, there's still going to be that problem, mm -hmm. you know? So you have women staying in situations where they have to stay. Yeah, that's, do you get what that's I'm saying? Reality. You that's know, so reality. even the security is not even just police brutality, but even in their homes, you yeah, know. Um, domestic violence, all sexual of that. violence. Do you get what I'm saying? So you're not able to just get up, oh, or you're thinking, okay, if I leave, how will I take care of my kids? Who's going to pay fees? Who's going to pay rent? Who's going to feed them? You know, and this is what talking, you know, we are privileged. Mm -hmm. We've gone to school. We have 
we, you know, we have jobs, you know, we can make money. The greater percentage of women in this country don't have that. You know, so it's easy, it's easy for us to forget that and think that just us in our little mm -hmm. caucus here, that's how Nigeria is. It's not, it's not that. And then the further north you go, the poverty level is, is higher, it's yeah. higher, it's higher. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then you add throwing culture, throwing religion that tells you, listen, you're second class. Do you understand? Your, do you get what yeah. I'm saying? So it really, it really has to do with talking about, I think the first step is talking about it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think it's protesting. I think it's having these conversations, you know, being on platforms like this to talk about these issues. But, um, but it's still a thing. Yeah, it is. It's so thing. I've always, to be honest, whenever yeah. I see posts like that, just before we end this conversation, yeah. a woman coming out to say, oh, you see, I had to stay because, or I always ask myself, what can I do? Because Ruby, we do Blackout Tuesdays. Okay. We do... Um, let's post a picture in black and white and solid. We do all this as well. Like you just said, go deep, deep into the door. They don't even have internet access to yeah. see our black house or Thank to see you. our black and white pictures or saying? to see our hands raised in solidarity to support women. Realistically, what can someone like me, like what can I do? Like yeah. sitting in my house, seeing a story like that, that would really have impact. Apart from just the internet's taking a nice picture and then putting a finger up in the air saying I, I, I stand in solidarity. I mean, first and foremost, we understand that media has a very powerful effect mm -hmm, and it has mm -hmm. a way of um, influencing people. So it's a good thing. Yeah. We need to keep doing it. We mm -hmm. shouldn't stop. We, in fact, we should amplify it. Yeah. But I think like things like volunteering in places, there, there are all these give mm -hmm. so that they can help to empower. Yeah. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? Support them. Bring them onto your platform and then share that information with people and listen, oh, this is available. There's this, um, gosh, I forget the name. <laughs> but there's actually, there actually there's this uh, group of women who help women that are trying to get out of this situation. I imagine that they're not as funded as they could be. Yeah. So we could help with that, you Absolutely. know. Um, if we see a woman going through something like that. Give her a hug. Honestly, <laughs> I've been, I've been yeah. there, you know, and I, I've had that experience. And she just said, I'm not going anywhere because of my children. Mm. What could I say, you know? But I said, I'm here to talk, you know, I'm here to be yeah. here for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever it is, you know, I'm here, for, even if it's just a shoulder to cry on or someone to talk to, I'm here for that. And Encouraging and listen, go out and get that money, girl. Yes. Yes, yes. Go out and get that money. Mm -hmm. Because once you can, you are able to make more. You have money gives you choices, yeah. options. Ooh, preach. Yes, it does. It gives you, you can just say, I ain't doing this no yes, more. You know, but, <laughs> so I think that one very important thing is just finding out, look around, ask around. In most states you have there's some kind of home or shelter yeah. support. Go All volunteer, right. you know, okay. go spread the word about it. All right, and, that, well, and then yeah. don't judge women that are in that situation. Because I hear that, why can't she just leave? Oh, she yeah. went back, but you don't understand your privilege. Do you understand mm -hmm. even the mindset that you have that even makes you say, I will not That's tolerate that. That's a very important that. factor, not judging. Yes. Because already, even Because it's shame. so easy to judge. Because in my head, I'll be like, what's wrong with this woman? Thank Come you. leave that place. Because for you, you can't fathom. I can't fathom what will you keep me there. Yes. But for some people, they feel like that's the only option. Then if you have exalted marriage. Yeah, that's another thing. Culture. Culture, you Culture know, so. is the way of life, but sometimes yes. you need to tweak it. Yeah, so you that's why what we're doing are these conversations and, you know, just putting your money where your mouth is. All right, Ruby. Now, before yeah. we wrap this up, I have to ask, what is your favorite song right now? Um, see, I don't know. <laughs> don't worry, sing it for me. I, I, I'm drinking hoping. <laughs> Ruby Gang, thank you so much for joining me on Arise 360 today. We've had... We've, had, we've said so much, and I think, you know, it's spoken to me in so many different yeah. ways, and I know for a fact that even I am going to do better. Yeah.